We are joined by Mark Bristow, Barrick Gold president and CEO. The company reported an earnings beat earlier today and announced a buyback for investors as well, a new buyback program. Mark, thank you for joining us. A big question in the market surrounding gold is where really where prices go from here. Uh, how much can they come off the highs we've seen in December? How do you really talk to investors about the price itself? So it's a very interesting time. And I, I, you know I've been talking about this for a while. You know, everyone wishes the interest rates are going to come down rapidly. And, and of course, uh, you know, the bet on, on the gold comes back on. But I think there's a much more systemic problem, and that is the, uh, the global economy is not in good shape, and, and neither is the U.S. economy. And, uh, and so I think we're going to see interest rates higher for longer, and we'll run the risk of stag inflation. And ultimately, that will bring back the, the, the upward pressure on gold, because it's then risk on uh, as far as the global economy goes, and, and of course, the U.S. economy. So. You know, I think this is a, a dynamic that's going to play itself out. At the end of the day, I still believe that the, the, the risk is on the upside uh, when we, we talk about the medium and long term for gold price. And that's what we remember. We allocate capital for the long term. Uh, you know, today's gold price or tomorrow's is actually not relevant uh, in our business. Well, that's interesting. Do you think that it'll actually hit new records at that rate? Yeah, I think there's very real uh, risk on the upside. And, uh, you know, I think, but again, you know, I've never been one who runs a company for uh, a specific gold price. Um, we focus very much on making sure we can make uh, uh, returns for our, all our stakeholders uh, throughout the cycle. One big question when it comes to Barrick Gold is not only about the, the industry you're well known for, the gold industry, but how you diversify. Mark, at what point will you consider more mergers and acquisitions to get there, particularly in the world of copper? So, you know, we are the only mining company with real organic growth in the short term uh, in copper. We set out to expand our portfolio from a very gold focused portfolio to one that includes copper and of course our our very big project the Rikadik project in Pakistan comes with both it's a it's in its own right a world class gold mine and equally a world class copper mine and so that's the ideal model for us going forward uh, you know these big uh, porphyry deposits we call them that that uh, you know yields both high amounts of gold and copper, and 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 again, uh, you know, I've repeatedly said that M and A is definitely a tool that you can use to grow, uh, given uh, that you can create that opportunity to be able to deliver value other than just relying on the commodity price to lift you above the price you pay. We've been able to do that consistently throughout the last five years in Barrick, and I've certainly done it for my entire career. And uh, and so we we're, we're we're hesitant to be able to, or we're hesitant to pay premiums that are right. difficult to give returns. Well, that was my M &A. next question: Is our gold valuation still too prohibitive to make a significant acquisition? I think it's very important to, you know, what we've seen across the mining industry recently is, is that the commodities have softened, the commodity prices, and also the equity prices have also softened. So it's, it's a challenging time to be able to do M&A, and it's always about relativity. You know? Is there a relative opportunity between the target uh, share price and, and the the, the the share price of the um, of the acquirer, and so you know that it's a complicated equation. We've, as I said, managed to get it right most of the time, and and we're very diligent in how we uh, assess uh, M and A opportunities. How do you view the geopolitical tensions that have been brewing around the world? Do you think about this as a, a boon for gold prices, more movement into gold as a hard asset? Or do you think that there will be more challenges moving forward in terms of really tapping mines for gold moving forward? 
So, so really, we've seen that. Uh, it's one of the, the real supporters of the, the bottom end of the gold price is the, is the, the, the risk profile across the uh, global economy. And in particular, we've seen a big move to de-dollarization, uh, which uh, of particularly emerging market uh, central bank uh, asset uh, profiles. And, uh, and, and on the same time, you know, the deglobalization of this world, which is a tragedy, really. Uh, but that's driving inflation, making it much more complicated uh, as far as assessing risk and on a global basis. We are a global uh, business. We, we operate in all four uh, continents across the globe. So we manage that um, and operate in that that dynamic all the time, but without a doubt, um, you know, there's been a big shift. The biggest purchases of gold recently uh, have been the central banks, emerging market central banks, as they move to re rebalance their their asset portfolio in the face of re reducing their exposure to the U.S. dollar.